Hello everyone. Welcome to uh, my first live stream or even video in weeks. Um, for those of you who are, are might not be on Instagram or you didn't know, um, I went on my cruise to Alaska. It was lovely and I came home and immediately got COVID. So <laughs> I, had got, I had COVID. Um, <clears throat> according to the test that I keep taking, I still have it, but I'm feeling like I'm kind of over the hard part of it and just, you know, on the mend. So for the most part, doing really well. Thanks to everyone who's joining. Tonight, I'm going to be creating, um, well, I'm going to be playing with a technique that I wondered if it was new. Not really sure. I hadn't really seen it anywhere. It kind of, kind of I came upon it by accident. And I thought I was, well, I was filming. I know I filmed it and then somehow accidentally deleted the footage. And I was heartbroken because it was a video that I had filmed to share while I was on vacation. And then when I didn't have the footage, there was no video. So here we are, I'm gonna to try to recreate it. I tried to remember what colors I used even, but so this is the card. And um, I actually ended up doing the same technique on a second card. I'm telling you guys, this would have been a great video, I'm telling you. A second card and then oh no I had a third card in it this is why I was so heartbroken <laughs> because I had so many fun cards to show you in that video and then I lost all the footage so here we are I'm gonna focus on just this one technique that's kind of I don't even know what to call it after you guys see it then we can maybe figure out a name for it but um, I'm using Concord and nine ink Concord and ninth inks for this and um, I believe the Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated inks are of a simi similar uh, formulation. So you could use the Simon inks for this as well, but um, since I was using Concord and Ninth inks, I'm gonna stick with that. So uh, let's get into it. All right. So here are the colors. I mean, I think these are the colors I used. I was trying to remember. I have no clue. I, this is a really good guess. Anyway, so. I'm just gonna do what I was doing in that video and kind of experimenting. And then um, I will share my discoveries as we, as we go along the way. So my original thought was, I'm just gonna do um, some like big puddles of ink and then splatter it onto some watercolor paper. So I have an acrylic block here, get a, get a nice, big puddle of ink going here because you want it to be a uh, liquid enough that you can it'll pull to one side of the block so then you can do this and get some paint splatter and I've got my whole work surface here covered <laughs> in paper towels because I just know from the last time it gets messy like I'm getting splatter everywhere hello editing Christina here I'm going to be talking you through this while I speed through the footage from the live stream because it just took a really long time. So I splattered a bunch of dragon fruit ink onto the watercolor paper, tried to splatter it quite a bit all over it. And then I grabbed a paper towel and I dried this with a heat tool and also sopped up some of the really wet puddles of ink with a paper towel. I then moved on to, uh, let's see, this was grape soda ink. And I did the same exact thing. I wanted to get quite a bit of splatter all over this area. Lots and lots of ink. After I had all of the purple splattered on, I once again dried it with a heat tool and sopped up some of the really, really wet puddles with the corner or edge of a paper towel. After the grape soda was dry, I then moved on to uh, sunflower, which is kind of a nice kind of golden yellow. And I did the same exact thing, adding color on this. Now, when I was initially putting uh, all of this splatter down onto my watercolor paper, when I, you know, filmed it and then lost all the footage, I was really trying to fill in lots of gaps with color. I didn't want a lot of white hanging out. So I moved on to Tide Pool. So I just kept splattering on more and more color, trying to fill all of the gaps and trying to get lots of color on there. This took quite a bit of time. Uh, it was a very time consuming process trying to get all these splatters. And uh, even at the end, I still wasn't completely uh, happy with how much of the white was covered by color. 
The last ink that I used was black and I splattered that on and then proceeded to dry all of those water droplet areas just the best that I could. When I was originally doing this technique and how I discovered it was at this point, I thought this is gonna take five million years to fill in every single area of this white background with paint splatter. It's just taking way too long. And I was getting frustrated and I was like, there's, there's no way around this. So I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna spray it. And maybe it'll spread some color, we'll get some things going. And the most magical thing happened, and I'm hoping that it will happen again, because if it doesn't happen again now, I'm like, it was a one-off thing. This is not a real technique, but here we go. I'm gonna hit this with my spray bottle. And when I did it initially, I was like, holy crap, what is happening? Because it was almost as if I was using color burst powders or Nouveau shimmer powders, or something like that. So I'm gonna spray this and hopefully it'll work. If I can get my spray bottle going, okay. Okay, so then I started tipping my board, just like getting a ton of water on there and it just starts to spread. And I don't know if it's, I'm not gonna be able to get the same look because yeah, it's just not doing the same exact thing that it, it did before. But I was like, what is going on? So I think I have just a little too much pink on this. That's what's happened. Okay, so here, here, these, these are things I'm learning here. Okay, so when I initially did this background over here, the thing that surprised me is like, wait a minute, is this black waterproof? Sure enough, on the back, it says it's waterproof. Fast drying colors, waterproof. These other ones are not. That's why the black didn't spread when I got it wet. So I think what happened over here, because you can see there's lots of little white spots coming in here, and I am getting white kind of up here in the corners. I think it's just because I didn't have as much splatter there. So I guess maybe if you wanna have a lot, lot more of this white kind of glowing through, you have to make sure that your splatters aren't overlapping too much. You wanna preserve some of the white in the middle. So then I recreated these again with the knowledge of what I gained that first time around. I did the same exact colors, but I did quite a bit less splatter. I wanted to preserve those white areas. So I started out with sunflower, followed by tide pool. Then I came in with grape soda, and I made sure to dry each one of these in between so that I wouldn't have any of the colors mixing while they were wet. So I brought in all of that grape soda. And then as I brought in dragon fruit, which was the color that really overwhelmed my last uh, kind of attempt at this, I decided to be very conservative with the dragon fruit, not add very much because it's a very intense color and I knew it would kind of overwhelm things. The last color I brought in was that black. And I set this aside and we're gonna spritz that in a minute here. Since I was doing this and I was waiting for things to dry, I did a second color combo and I'm starting out with the color Buttercup. Did a really nice splatter on this one. Kind of a little less splatter on this sec second example because I wanted to kind of see what the difference would be if I had even less color. So now I'm coming in with the color Sprout and adding a little bit of that green. The next color I brought in was Juniper. And this one is just a little bit of a more intense uh, blue. It has a little bit of aqua to it as well. And then for the very last color on this particular example, I brought in Midnight. And because I wanted a little bit of that blue, a little bit more of an intense contrast. Um, so after I had all of that done, I dried it, made sure everything was completely dry before I moved on to the spritzing. So I'm gonna kind of spritz in one direction and spritz in another direction. I don't know if you can kind of see on the original that you can kind of see that that's like where the water was going and it's kind of up and down. So let's try that. Hold on, I'm gonna get my spray bottle ready to go. Okay, here, yes, this is happening, this is better. This is what I was going for. You're getting all the bleeding Okay, I'm gonna stop there. 
and then I'm going to tip my board. See if I can get these colors to spread a little bit more. Come over here. And get the colors kind of moving. I'm just using a wet brush to encourage the color to kind of spread from those areas as well. Okay. Then I can use my little paper towels that I've cut out just to sop up some of these really wet spots. This was a good experiment. This turned out really cool. <laughs> so I think that the trick is to leave lots of white space and don't do too much of any one color. I think that is the key. All right, I'm gonna let this air dry and come back to this other one. I have high hopes, y'all. I have high hopes now. All right, so this is the black. I'm gonna spritz in like kind of, kind of holding my uh, spray bottle kind of at an angle so that it can get the like, There we go. This is what I wanted. I wanted the colors like bleeding, you know? Yes, this is what I wanted. Okay, so I guess that the trick is leave white space and also uh, after you've spritzed it, let it just do its thing. Splatter spray spritz, not bad. Okay, so I think for today's live stream, I'm actually not gonna turn these into cards, but I will take photos of them and I'll include um, the original cards that I had created using the technique. So these were the two original cards. I used a uh, stamp set and die set from Concord and Ninth. So it's the Bravo stamp set. And then there's a coordinating die set. So it's Bravo dies. Those are the two kind of products that I used for these cards. This was my technique that I accidentally stumbled upon. And I really like, I liked the troubleshooting we did here tonight, figuring out how to preserve the kind of directional kind of aspect of things. I'm loving how this is moving here. It is really cool. So here are my backgrounds. Um, myself and all of those in the comments that were giving great suggestions for what to name this technique. We're going to go with splatter and spritz um, technique. I think that's a pretty good descriptor of exactly what it is. You're splattering and then spritzing. <laughs> I think it's great. Um, thanks so much for watching today. Um, I will have photos of these included in the blog post and at the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure you check out those links down below. And as for a bit of housekeeping, 43 winners were drawn from my giveaway, my craft room cleanup giveaway, and 12 did not respond. 12 people did not respond. So I have another batch of giveaways coming up soon, as soon as I'm able to package those up. So I will just include those 12 in the next round of winners. Um, just goes to show, like, these giveaways can sometimes be a little bit challenging to organize because people don't almost respond to the emails. So if you are entering giveaways, uh, please, please, please check your email, make sure your email address is correct. Um, yeah. And some of that could be because I drew the winners and emailed a little, like almost a week after I was supposed to, because I had COVID. Um, but anyway, and if those of you who, um, did not check the winners list. It's there. The winners are listed in the video description and also at the blog post for that giveaway. If you have not checked the list to see if your name is there, you might want to. One of the winners who has contacted me, um, she's like, I think I'm on the list, but I didn't get an email. Sure enough, her email address had a typo in it. And all I had to do was fit, you know, I just fixed that little typo and then she was able to claim her prize. So if you by chance had a typo in your email and you never got your winning email, uh, that would be a way to double check to make sure. Anyway, thanks for watching today. I will catch you guys another video very soon. In fact, very soon 
Um, I have a video going up on the Simon channel that I'll be sharing here on my channel as well tomorrow. So I'll be back very, very soon. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.